Assalamualaikum. My name is Widi Mutakin from Expose Academy. In this video, we will discuss how to create objects and then learn how to modify them. This is the second part of the Getting Started with 3ds Max 2021 tutorial series. So be sure you check the first part if you haven't done so. In 3ds Max, if you want to create a new object, you need to go to the Create panel, which is this leftmost tab in the Command panel. And if you want to modify existing objects, then you should go to the Modify panel, which is the second tab after the Create panel. In the Create panel, you can see categories in the form of these small buttons. Each of these represents the type of object that you can create in 3ds Max. This one is the geometry category where you can create 3D objects such as box, sphere, cylinder, etc. This one is the shapes category where you can create vector shapes such as line, rectangle, circle, etc. This one is used when we need to create light sources. This one is for creating cameras and so forth. For now, we will focus only on creating 3D objects. The geometry panel is also divided into several subcategories. In this drop-down list, you can see standard primitives, extended primitives, compound objects, and so on. If you have plugins installed, you may even see more object categories in this list such as this Krona category that I have here. Now, let's focus on the standard primitives. In 3ds Max, the techniques for creating 3D objects are varied. They depend on what type of object you are creating. But in general, they follow the same pattern. Let's start with the simplest method, which is clicking and dragging. For example, creating a sphere. Click the sphere button here. Notice how this button becomes active. And then, in the perspective viewport, click drag like so, then release. And we just created a new sphere object. Now, pay attention to this sphere button. As long as this button is still active, whenever you click and drag and release again in the viewport, a new sphere will be created. So basically, you are now in this mode of creating spheres. To exit from this creation mode, you can simply right-click. In 3ds Max, right-clicking is a common method for exiting many different modes. Next, let's try creating teapots and plane objects. You have seen me doing this before in a previous tutorial. To create a plane object, click the plane button, and then click drag, like so, then release. For creating a teapot, you can click the teapot button, then click drag on the viewport to create one. Just remember to right-click once to exit the object creation mode. The second technique which requires more interaction is by using the click-drag method followed by dragging and then clicking once to finish the process. For example, let's create a box. Click the box button, then click drag on the perspective viewport. Now, the first click-drag process will create this base area for the width and the length. There is no height yet. After we release the mouse button, we are now moving on to define the height of the box. I'm not touching any button now. I'm just moving the mouse up and down to define the height. Notice that the height can be a negative value which makes the box goes below the ground. After we are satisfied with the box height, click once to confirm it. And we just finished creating a box. As always, you are still in the creation mode. We can see the box button here is still active. So right click to exit. We can use the same technique for the cylinder object. Click on the cylinder button. Click drag to define the base. Release the mouse. Then move up or down. Then click once. And we have a cylinder. Right click to exit the cylinder creation mode. The last technique of object creation requires several clicks after the first initial click drag. One example of this object is the tube object. So let's click on the tube button. Click drag in the viewport. This will define the first radius or the outer radius of the tube. After we release, we need to define the inner radius by moving the mouse back and forth. After we click once, we can then move the mouse back and forth again to define the height of the tube. Then click once to finish the process. Right click to exit the tube creation mode. By now, I believe you already understand the pattern of the object creation process in 3ds Max. 
you should be able to explore other objects by yourself. After you are done with the standard primitives category, you can try the extended primitives. Here, you can try creating hedra, torus knot, chamfer box, etc. Now, let's discuss how we can modify objects in 3ds Max. If you open the modify panel and you don't have any object selected, it will look empty. But if you select an object by clicking on one of these objects in the viewport, you can see the modify panel now displays the parameters of that current object. So basically, the modify panel is contextual, meaning it only shows the parameters of the currently selected object. If you click on an empty space, no object is selected, and so the modify panel becomes empty again. Because different objects have a different set of parameters, the modify panel does not have a consistent UI. If you select a sphere object, for example, this is what you will see. But if you select a teapot object, then you can see these different parameters. Here, you can turn on or off certain parts of the teapot object. You can also change the size of it using this radius of value. In 3ds Max, you will see this kind of up and down button everywhere. This is called the spinner. You can click the up or the down button one at a time to change the value. Or you can also click and hold and then drag it up and down like so. While dragging the spinner like this, if you hold the control key on a keyboard, the value will change faster. But if you hold the alt key, then the value will change at a slower pace. Sometimes this is helpful when you need to make small adjustments. But if you really need to input a certain fixed value, you can just double click on a text input field and then type in the value that you want. For example, 20, then press enter or escape. If you are new to 3ds Max or even never used 3D software before, and you want to start learning and mastering 3D modeling using 3ds Max in the quickest way possible, you definitely need to take this course. You will be guided to model all these 3D objects from start to finish, while at the same time learn important concepts in 3D graphics step by step along the way. There are more than 9 hours of quality educational content in this course. So join the course now through the link I provided below. As always, subscribe to my channel, share the video, give a thumbs up if you like the video, and give a thumbs down if you hate the video. Please check out the next part of this tutorial or any other tutorials on my channel. Wassalamualaikum.